Hello everybody, today we're going to build the most efficient dust collection system using science. Hello everybody and welcome to my shop. Today we are going to build the most efficient dust collection system using science. And let's start from the beginning. What's the purpose of a dust collection system? It's to avoid sawdust to scatter around in our shops and to arrive to our lungs because sawdust is cancerogenic and this is science, not me. Today we're going to answer the following questions. What's the best diameter we have to use to build uh, our dust collection system? Where do I put the dust collector? What are the most common errors uh, we do in building uh, dust collection systems? Blast gates are going to talk about those guys uh, in the next episode. I have a new design, I can control them by remote without electronics. And then some tricks to save the pressure. Because you know, we don't just want to build a dust collection system, but the most efficient dust collection system at the lowest price. I myself just built a DIY dust collection for my shop. So today we're going to see some theory and then we're going to get our hands dirty. But let's start from the beginning again. How does the air catch first and carries then the sawdust? Wood particles are scattered in all the directions and there are several forces in the game. You have the centrifugal force given by the spinning blade or in this very case the, the spinning bit and then the gravity. To catch the sodas, we need to have a force that is greater than those forces together. And this force is given by the air pressure, which lifts the particle. Then the momentum given by the air velocity will carry the particles through the pipe. So we want to have the highest possible pressure. Pressure is the reason why fluids are moving into piping. It's the energy of the fluids and we engineers call it head. We also want to have the highest possible air velocity, but unfortunately air scrapes through the pipe walls and that produces frictions. Yes, even the air produces friction, uh, which means we lose some energy and we lose head, so we call it head loss. That means that just outside the dust collector we have a certain amount of head, a certain pressure, but the end of the pipe we only have part of this pressure, part of this head. And the higher the velocity, the higher the head loss is. So just to be clear, head loss is bad. We have two types of head losses. So we have frictions throughout the pipe, as we already saw, and then we have localized pressure losses. So let's see some numbers. Let's say we have a small dust collector, let's say 30 liters per second or 65 CFM with a 40 millimeter diameter. That means we have a certain head loss per meter. Let's change the diameter, let's see what happens. If we raise the diameter to 50 millimeters, which is around 2 inches, we have one third of the loss. 75 millimeters, the loss is very, very low. Now let's change the dust collector. Let's say we have uh, the double the power, 60 liters per second, which is around 130 CFM. Losses are way higher. Still, with higher diameter, we have less losses. So now we are tempted to use the highest possible diameter, but no. For two reasons. First, because we spend more money, the higher the diameter, the more money we spend and then because we have less efficiency. In fact, uh, greater diameter means also lower air speed, but air needs to drag sodos, so we want the higher air speed. But higher speeds also means higher head loss, so we better go not too high with air speed. How do we solve this circle? I plot on the chart the best air speed we want to keep, and that's actually how industrial components, industrial uh, big ventilation plants are designed. We set the air speed given the application we want to run, and then we choose the diameter based on that. For this kind of application, meaning uh, uh, carrying sawdust, you want to stay around 20 meters per second. And that means that with a dust collector with 75 liters per second, the best diameter is 80 millimeters. If your dust collector is uh, 60 liters per second, then the best diameter is uh, 75 millimeters. If the dust collector is 30 liters per second, we want to stay on 50 millimeters. Of course, we are talking about the internal diameter. My new dust collector is 320 liter per second, so I'm gonna go with a diameter of 140 millimeters. That's the point where I went to the store and uh, I said, I want all the 140 millimeters piping you have, and I also want an helicopter on the roof. But the 140 millimeters was not available. They had uh, 150 millimeters and 125. 150 it's a big diameter, so a lower air speed. 125 is a, a smaller diameter, that means uh, higher speed and higher losses. 
but in this case the difference on the losses is not that much so I went with the 125 millimeters which is something that usually happens on construction sites so you have a nice design a project uh, that says you to use some materials and then that material is not available so you need to be creative and change the plan in real time without losing efficiency and without breaking the rules you adapt you improvise you overcome and now I'll leave you with some numbers you can use to choose your uh, diameter based on your dust collector and then it's time to get some hands dirty. Okay, as you saw, my pipes are under the bench and the dust collector is centered. Why? Uh, the losses we saw are per unit of length. So the longer the piping, the higher the loss. Let's say we have several machines on the same pipe. The first one has almost no losses, uh, so it works uh, very good. It has a lot of pressure. Moving away from the dust collector, the losses are higher and then the pressure is lower. If you have 10 times the length, you have 10 times the losses, so the system is less efficient. So the principle would be just keep the shortest possible path. And the answer to this principle is to keep the dust collector in a central position. This way the longest path is only 5 meters and thus the system is the double more efficient. And that's why I put my dust collector in between all the machines. More on this later. And that also allowed me to hide pipes under the bench. So my dust collection system is also space efficient because I don't need to waste precious wall space. And that also means I, uh, I need shorter pipes. Head loss also depends on uh, pipe roughness uh, on the internal surface. You want to use the most smooth pipe you can find. PVC or plastic is good. Flexible pipes like this one Flexible pipes like this one are not because air keep bouncing between all these bumps. So you want to use the lowest possible flexible piping. Moreover, to keep a constant air speed, we need to reduce the diameter on long pipe. And that's why I started with 125 millimeters and then moved to 100 millimeters, which is around uh, uh, 4 inches and then moved to 80 millimeter and that will ensure that the air will carry the sodas with no sediment which can cause clogs but anyway better safe than sorry I added an inspection section just to be sure so I can clean the piping if needed where do I put it at the lowest point of the piping which is where I expect the sawdust to sediment And now let's complete the piping connecting all the machines.
this piece here is uh, 3D printed and as you can see there is a smooth enlargement here that allow air to expand gradually and then this is mounted here and then we have the flexible piping why it's so important to have a funnel here because again this preserves head losses until now we've been talking about continuous head loss now we're going to talk about the second type there is uh, localized uh, head losses every time you change the diameter or direction we have a localized uh, head loss if you have an elbow uh, we have a loss which is the same loss we would have with uh, an additional one meter of piping if we have a straight elbow or a 90 degree elbow the loss mm -hmm. equals to three meters on the other hand if you have a smooth elbow we only have half the loss so we better build our elbows using two 45 degrees elbows two elbows in a row that's also bad there should be more than six inches or 15 centimeters between two junctions talking about junction we better use a 45 degrees joint what about junction when air is coming from two different directions a wide joint is way better also let's avoid sharp diameter changes uh, better use a smooth connection and remember every joint or elbow is a loss so the principle here is to design the piping mm. to have the minimum amount of joints or elbows now let's put all together and let's see a complete tour of the entire system Okay, this is the electric part of the shop. As you can see, I put my dust collector here, just in the middle, and then we have a right arm here with a miter saw, the drill station, and the bell sander. And on the other side, we have the table saw, the thick knife maker, and then a huge CNC over there. Let's go underneath. Okay, as you can see, there is a flexible pipe that leaves from the dust collector and then it reaches this guy here, which is the principal piping. The diameter of this principal piping is 125 millimeters, as we saw at the beginning of the video. Here we have the first junction and I used a 45 degrees joint. Going to the right, I used a 90 degrees angle. Unlikely here I couldn't use anything else because of the limited space. Going again to the right, we have the inspection section and then a first arm which is going up to the miter so here again I use a 45 degrees angle let's keep going here we have two more additional side pipes which are going to the drill station and to the belt sander here the diameter is smaller this one is 80 millimeter so we pass it from 125 to 100 to 80 millimeter and this pipe here is of course too long and you have to cut it I cannot show you the blast gates right now, I'm gonna see them in the next video. Plus, talking about this uh, tape here, uh, I couldn't use the cement here because of the configuration of the piping, but I found this tape here which is waterproof, airproof, plus it's orange, so I'm gonna use this right now. Instead, going from the dust collector to the left, we have uh, again uh, another elbow and then we have three joints, three 45 degrees joints. The first one is going to the CNC, so it's going up here and then it arrives uh, here. The second one is going to the table saw from the top. And the last one is splitting in two, one going to the thicknesser and the last one going to the table saw from behind. And then I left a plug here just to keep it to clean the shop. Okay, finally I completed my brand new DIY dust collection system, super efficient. Why? Because uh, I chose the right diameter, I, I used the shortest path possible, I used the lowest possible amount of flexible piping, I put my dust collector in the center of all the machines, I used the lowest uh, possible amount of elbows or joints, and then I guess there's nothing more I can do to make it more efficient. In the next episode, we're gonna see the blast gates. I have a brand new design, it's an original design that allows me to remote control them without using electronics. If you enjoyed this video, please give a thumb up and then please consider subscribing. And I'll see you next time. Ciao!